before we dive in, a huge shout out to everyone who supported the channel. If you want to support me in making these videos, you should use the new join button. Tier 2 members get exclusive Discord roles and, best of all, you get me and my team helping you out with your projects. So, if you're looking for some extra support or just want to say thanks, hit the join button below. Alright, let's get right into it. Welcome back to another IMG IC++ video. Before starting, please leave a like and subscribe as it helps me a lot and today we are making a custom button. I might sound weird a bit because I'm very sick, but that's alright. The whole purpose of these videos where we make a custom slider, a custom button, etc. It's not to make the best possible outcome, no, it's just to show you that you can even modify the things the IMGY developer did himself and you can recreate them. So, goes to show another time that IMGY is incredibly versatile and you can do anything with it. So, today we are making a custom button. I'm gonna make it here, you can make it inside the IMGY namespace if you wish, I'll just make it here. It's going to be a bowl and let's name it custom button, obviously you name it however you need and like. I suggest something shorter, you can leave it button. Anyway, it's only gonna take a constant char which will be the label. So the name for the button and also the ID. So first thing we're gonna do after that is push the ID because we need to give our element an ID. So push ID of label. We're gonna use the name as an ID as you do basically uh, everywhere. I did right, push ID, all right. So going forward, we need the button size. So I'm gonna put a prop button size um let's see what one is your size and you can um, choose another one or make it um, proportional to your application i'm gonna go with a hard coded one so i'm gonna go i'm vector 2 and give it a size of let's say 120 and 30. This obviously matters on how big the window is, so you should make it proportional of the screen size or whatever you need of the window size. But for now I'm going to use a hard coated so just I can show you. Anyways, after this we need to create the invisible button to handle the click and hover interactions. So first thing, we are going to get the cursor screen pause. So P is going to be equal to get cursor screen position. After that we check if it's clicked, so ball is clicked equals to IMGUI invisible button and then let's say of the same label and button size as ours. And then we do I'm draw list and get the draw list, which is as always equals to get window draw list what happens here is we only make the front end of things we make how the button looks and the actual button which can be pressed or um, uh, clicked hovered etc is this invisible button which you can't see but it does all the functions for us which is amazing that's what i've been telling you Anyways, now let's get to colors real fast. I won't spend that much time here. We need a few colors and I think five will be enough and I'll tell you now for what. We're gonna use some copy paste here. So I'm U32, we're gonna use for colors, color underscore, the first color is background. It's going to be equal to I'm GUI get color U34, U32 of the I'm back four. And then here we're gonna put the color of the background, which uh, will be the border, actually. So let's do something like 0, 15 everywhere. Why not? Uh, well, 0, 15 for the colors, and the last one being the opacity will be 1.0F. And we're gonna copy paste this four more times. So one, two, three, four. Then we do the color hover, then we do the gradient start and gradient end, which will be G1, G2, let's say, gradient start, gradient end, and color text. For the hover, I'm gonna go with something gray, 
Uh, so I'll just change this to 25 each. For the gradient start, it doesn't really matter, but for the purpose of this video, we choose something like, let's say, blue. Let's go with a full blue, so 1.0F. Uh, for the gradient end, let's do something else. Let's do a red. And the rest don't matter. And for the last one, the color of the text, obviously this most likely want it to be white. So it is going to be white. One everywhere. If you don't know what's up with these values, you can see they don't look like um, RGBA. They are still RGBA, but because we use Vector 4, all of these values here have to be the path to be between zero and one. So they have to be divided by 255. So if I have an RGB of let's say 255, 66 and 77, in the I'm vector 4, I'm gonna put this divided by 255, which will be one, hence the one here where for white everything should be 255. The second one will be 66 divided by 255 and so on. But uh, we don't need to divide them because we use this to convert them directly to U34, U32. Going forward, Let's add now our um, rect field multicolor, which is the background of the button and is gonna be the gradient. So we use our draw list we made. Add rect field multicolor and let's begin P. After that, we're gonna have an iron vector two and we're gonna go P dot X plus button size, uh, obviously dot X as well. And the same thing, but with Y, P dot Y plus the button size that Y. This is just a sizing. So this is the vector, the I'm back to. And then we need to start the, you see here the upper left, upper right, bottom right, bottom left. You can actually give it four values, but if you want just a normal gradient, a linear gradient, you can use the start and end two times so we're gonna go uh, start end and start so we're gonna use color g1 color g, uh, g2 and then again color g2 and then color g1 and it should look just fine so with that being said that's the multicolor rect going forward we need to draw the hover effect so if I'm joy, we can use is item hovered here. So if the item is hovered, then we're gonna add the rect on top, uh, which will be gray. I think we'll, well, yeah, we already made the color here, color underscore hover. So we're just gonna go draw list, add rect field this time, not multicolor, and the same things, literally. The same thing as P, then an I'm vector 2 made of this. You can just copy it from here since you wrote it already. And then the color, which is the hover one. With that being said, we can go to our text now which we need to center as well, but that's not an issue. So I'm vector to text size, first of all, and this will be equal to I'm GY. We have a function for that, which is calculate text size of the label, label. And then we use the text position, which will be I'm vector two text position being equal to another and vector two of p dot x plus and then here we open brackets and we say the button size dot x <laughs> this is interesting but you should understand it pretty easily so the button size dot x minus the text size dot y dot, dot x sorry same dot x and this whole thing you divide by two or multiply by 0 0.5, personal preference doesn't matter. And then you should do the exact same thing for the 
P dot Y. So it's gonna be P dot Y plus button size dot Y minus text size dot Y divided by two. And this should center it decently. After that, nothing else to do than, than just adding the text. So again, from draw list, you add text of text position and text size. No, sorry, text position and um, color text, I think it is now. And then the label, like this. Uh, oh, <laughs> pause. Okay. Seems like I can't write sometimes. But the last thing we have to do is pop our ID. So pop ID. If we don't do this, then everything will fail. And return if it's clicked as any function. And this is it. The custom button. And now we can use it exactly like a normal button so let's go somewhere here i don't even know where here it's all right i guess or just before another button okay let's replace this with custom button so if custom button of a label you will get show another window equal to false let's see close Now, what I suggest you do for your project, which I haven't included in this video because I don't want to literally just spill everything. I want you to learn something. What I recommend, and uh, you will see in a second, is you make your size proportional to the... Why is this gray at all times? <laughs> Might have done something, so let's check on that here on the custom button. If his item hovered, then we add the rect field huh. with the color hovered. But if it's hovered, it wasn't hovered. That's that's interesting. I'll check up on that in a second. Okay, if there's no issue with the code, simply I forgot the brackets here. But now, if we run the debugger, you will see that it should work fine. And one thing I do want to add is you should make the size of your button uh, be with the... Okay, you can see it in its beauty here. But what I was saying is you should make the X size of your button be proportional to your text. So if you have a very big text, then the button should get larger in order to contain all the text. So you don't want a hard-coded one like I did. You want to use the same function we did which is the calculate text size, which we used here. Use this and add some space in order to get the size of the button. Now I've did this to hard code it and to make it look nice for the thumbnail, but this is the button. I hope you liked it and I hope you can do nice things with it. So please let me know and don't forget to join Discord. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.